Uh, April is National Poetry Month. With us this morning is Chris Felver, author of a beautiful book of Native American poets and stunning photographs. It's called Tending the Fire, Native Voices and Portraits. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, so excited to have you on. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about this exhibit that you're going to be a part of at the San Francisco Library. Yes, uh, it is because it's National Poetry Month. They uh, wonderfully accepted the, the curator's bid, which was uh, Peter Sells, the noted historian, and Sue Cooley, okay. uh, to do the imagination of American poets. And because of that, uh, I have this wonderful exhibit that opens on Sunday afternoon, one o'clock, mm -hmm. in the main branch. And it has uh, 50 portraits with the calligraphic scripts, i.e. with the poems next to them, and a few other surprises. And uh, I'm w welcoming everyone. I hope, you know, it's a wonderful event. Well, I'm just looking through your book, and it's, it looks absolutely beautiful. I, like you said, it is. It's portraits of uh, some of these poets. They're writers, all Native American writers. And they're all Native American oh, writers. Yeah. And what I love about it is right next to the portrait of them is a handwritten message. Or is it a poem? Well, some are poems and some are uh, stories, shorter stories. Sure. But it, this follows along a line that I did a book a long time ago, which is what the exhibition is about, are selections from The Poet Exposed, which was the first book I did that has the calligraphic script or poem mm -hmm. next to the picture. And this is more uh, updated, shall I say, to a different group. But this is a fascinating group of people. And did you take the photos? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm a photographer. You are a photographer, <laughs> of course. Um, how did you find all of these people, or did they find you? No, I was, uh, it started in uh, Santa Fe at the art school there, and I started to make a few pictures there. And then I came here and I met our poet laureate, current poet laureate, Miss Kim Shuck, and she introduced me to a lot of people that, uh, across the country. And so I, I made a little trek across country and made a lot of portraits and had a lot of uh, poems given to me. And that's what the book is, a collection of my travels. And really, you call it native voices and por por portraits. So you're giving a voice to uh, a lot of people, of course, uh, Native Americans. What inspired you to do this? Well, poetry has been where I've started from. You know, when I first came to San Francisco uh, in 78, I went right over to uh, City Lights and met the whole crew over there and, and uh, North Beach was really alive with the poetry scene at that point. And there were readings every night. And uh, it was just a fascinating way to get involved in the city uh, and be entertained at the same time because poetry is, uh, is magic, you know. It is magic and it's so diverse. Uh, in this town, Harold Norris once said, there are more poets than people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so then what inspired you to put all of these voices in this one book? Well, I think the, uh, these committed uh, and engaged writers needed to be in, uh, in one book, in, in, under one cover. And so they could have an expression and, uh, and their own voice. What did you learn going through all of that? Oh, how wonderful the community is, and how open, and uh, how environmentally aware and politically aware that the, uh, the Native Americans are. Mm. And there's so many, you know, there's over 550 tribes. And so, not that I got to them all, you know, but there are awful lot of people who are, they're not being given enough voice. Mm -hmm. The Native American situation is, uh, is in danger, I think. You talked about hundreds of tribes and, and some of them are very different, but they all kind of have these common themes. Well, the common theme is the environment and Mother Earth. And uh, no one is uh, not committed to that theme and so you know even when we had like uh, the uh, Alcatraz occupation sure. John Trudell and the AIM members those were the first people I met uh, uh, Dennis Banks wonderful wonderful young man and Joy Harjo mm -hmm. a great uh, musician and, and poet so I got involved sort of on the grassroots level and then it just kept continuing. Well, your work is always so lovely, so beautiful, um, and now you're a part of this exhibit at the San Francisco Public Library, and this is an exciting year, too, because of the curators, and it's just an exciting time for you all together. Well, not only that, but uh, it's uh, Sue Kubli uh, got the city to make Saturday Lawrence Ferlinghetti Day, and so it's his 99th birthday. Peter Sells, Peter Sells is turns 99 
March 27th, and he was the curator also of this show. So that's sort of exciting uh, in and of itself, you know, just to see Lawrence, who is the great Potter familia to all of us in, sure. in the city, the great, he's a great painter, a great poet. Well, and thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I have also... one other thing I want to say. Okay. On Tuesday yes. at 6 o'clock, I'm showing my Ferlinghetti film, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Rebirth of Wonder. And uh, naturally, it's free, and I hope uh, everyone can come and have a good time watching Lawrence in action, you know? Yes, so. all right, well thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And you can check out Chris's website at chrisvelver.com. The book is Tending the Fire, Native Voices and Portraits. And don't forget, Chris is part of that event kicking off National Poetry Month at the San Francisco Library, The Imagination of American Poets. It's happening March 24th through June 24th at the main library in the Jewett Gallery. Up next, how to change kids from picky eaters into food explorers when Bay Area Focus returns.